ESL lecture number nine. Welcome back to American Musical Theater. We've just passed the midterm, so good job, you guys. We're more than halfway through. So here we are. We are in week number nine. And I'm going to start talking about the 1940s, 50s, 60s, and closer to the music that you're probably familiar with. Let me start with an actress who was named June. June Havoc. June Havoc's memory of the theater life, of climbing out of the Depression and moving into the 1940s, can be represented in this story. As she told it, the Depression had really wiped out so much of everything, and many actors weren't doing a doggone thing because it was starvation time. So they thought, hey, kids, let's put on a show. We'll rent a theater, invite all the producers. That'll be great. Well, everybody did think it was a great idea, except that we rented the theater, but we didn't rent lights or costumes or sets. It was a fair stage with one bulb, the work light, and nobody came. At the end of it, a tall man came over to me and he said, why don't you come with me to the Paramore Theater? <laughs> so June Havoc thought, what the heck, if I got to lose, sure. And she went. And this voice from the dark in the back of the theater yelled out, can you sing? I, sure, yeah, I can sing. He said, just go ahead and sing any ordinary regular song. I don't care. T for two or something. And I said, uh, I don't know if I know the lyrics. He said, well, don't, don't worry about that. I'll throw them to you. So from the back of the house, she hears T for two, and two for T, and me for you, and you for me. And she sang along with Richard Rogers himself. The funny thing was, she didn't even know that it wasn't the director, George Abbott, that it was Rogers himself. All of these now famous Broadway creators like Larry Hart and, oh gosh, there were so many. <laughs> June Havoc didn't even know who they were, but she got the job. The show June Havoc got cast in was Pal Joey, and that's what I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about today. And it marked a real departure for the songwriting team of Rogers and Hart and their director, George Abbott. Pal Joey was based on the stories of John O'Hara, how perfect for St. Patrick's Day, yes? Pal Joey dispensed with the innocent optimism of the traditional musical comedy, the tawdry nightclub routines, and framed the story of an affair between a wealthy married woman and a sleazy gigolo.
lies. Their morals are a little off. They have their own code of ethics, but they're not by any means a good guy, right? And this musical, this Broadway musical, have the same uh, feel, the same taste, the same sensibility as a film noir, a little dark. The Broadway musical comedy started looking at the facts of life. government. 
gentlemen to rally the troops again. So he wrote a musical with Rogers called This Is the Army. It is an American musical review in two acts designed to boost morale for the U.S. during World War II with a book by James McCall and music and lyrics by Irving Berlin. It was produced by the U.S. Army on Broadway. So yes, it's very pro-military. <laughs> it was produced on Broadway in 1942 with a cast of U.S. soldiers for the benefit of the Army Emergency Relief Fund. Many of the performers juggled rehearsal schedules with weapons training. A typical day might involve dancing in the morning, firing rifles in the afternoon, and dressing up as a woman at night, all with the approval of the U.S. Army. On opening night, almost 2,000 people were packed into the Broadway theater. It was July 4th, 1942. The first July 4th of the war, crowds in the streets packed outside in the lobby. It was just packed. It was full of the usual first-nighters for a Broadway show, but it was also a lot of big brass people from Washington. It was a thrilling opening night. Imagine, we can only imagine because theater's been closed for a while, but the excitement in this audience, packed crowd, just before it even started. And then the curtain opens and on stage, there are 300 young men in uniform on bleachers delivering the opening chorus. This is the army, Mr. Jones. No private rooms or telephones. You had your breakfast in bed before, but you won't have it there anymore. This is the army, Mr. Green. We like the barracks nice and clean. You had a housemaid to clean your floor, but she won't help you out anymore. Do what the bugler's command. Bearing the army and not in the van. This is the army, Mr. Brown. You and your baby went to town. She had you worried, but this is war, and she won't worry you anymore. <laughs> the 
has sold you quite a while, and I would like to state the life is simply wonderful. The army court is great. I sleep with 97 others in a wooden hut. I love them all. They all love me. It's very lovely, but oh, how I hate to get up in the morning. Oh, how I'd love to remain in bed. For the hardest blow of all is to hear the bugler call. You gotta get up, you gotta get up, you gotta get up this morning. Someday I'm going to murder the bugler. Someday they're going to find him dead. I'll amputate his reveille and step upon it heavily and spend the rest of my life in bed.